Let's have a look at an overview of the general management timetable for our key Apple pests, which I always like to visualize in terms of specific decision periods. European red mite starts at delayed dormant with the first control efforts directed at the eggs. By the summer months, you need to pay attention to several generations of mixed modal stages, that is adults plus all immatures. Oriental fruit moth adults appear from late pink to bloom, at which time monitoring is advised. And starting at petal fall and into July and August, the larvae from two broods generally needs to be managed. The third brood is not always necessarily a problem. Oblique banded leaf roller shows up a little later with overwintered larvae possibly needing attention from late bloom to petal fall. By late June through July, we have the first summer larvae. Second summer larvae show up by mid-August, which are not always a problem, but they can be. Plum curculio has one generation with adults in the trees from about late bloom through four to six weeks past petal fall, depending on the temperatures. Coddling moth, once again, it's important to monitor for adults starting at late bloom to petal fall. Larvae are present throughout June and again starting in late July through August. And finally, apple maggot can be in the orchard by mid July. Again, the focus here is on adult monitoring. And this pest should be managed through August and possibly slightly into September. So, looking at these pests individually, starting with European red mite at delayed dormant. The main activity at this time is simply to be familiar with past history of ERM on your farm. And it's a good idea to examine some spurs for overwintered eggs, particularly in problem blocks to get a sense of where flare-ups might occur during the season. As a cue for a possible pre-bloom spray, a suggested action threshold would be 10% of the spurs examined with visible eggs. In terms of treatment options, Oil is a traditional standard, but, uh, and at half inch green, it goes on at 2% and, and reduced to 1% at tight cluster, or you can use a product having ovicidal activity, which can be used anytime from tight cluster to pink or petal fall. In the summer, from mid-June to mid-August, it makes the most sense to sample leaves for modal forms. For this activity, there are specific date appropriate sampling forms to use to determine whether mites are over the threshold each respective month, whether it's two and a half or five or seven and a half mites per leaf. Now, during these sampling sessions, you can also monitor for the presence of predatory mites, which can help you to decide on the urgency of any treatment you might be considering. Generally, finding one predator per 10 leaves indicates a potential for effective biological control. And there's a reference uh, publication that explains this process on the New York State IPM website under publications, achieving biocontrol of European red mite in Northeast apples. Fortunately, several treatment options are available during the summer months, and these can all be found in the tree fruit guidelines. Oriental fruit moth, is one of the first key moth pests to appear in the season, starting at late pink or early bloom. The activity at this time is to monitor for the first adult flight using pheromone traps, and of course, to note the biofix, which generally occurs between late April and early May. The main treatment decision at this time concerns the use of pheromone mating disruption, and there are products such as twin tube ties, meso dispensers, and aerosol puffers available. Starting at petal fall, you can use the biofix date you recorded together with the new apple insect bottle to time sprays for the first generation larvae. The suggested action timing is 350 to 375 degree days, base 45 from biofix. Treatment of this brood can often be satisfied with the plum curculio spray also found in the tree fruit guidelines, uh, which will help you to select the appropriate product or combination. Additionally, in high risk blocks, you can consider using a uh, coddling moth OFM virus product as a complement. 
for the summer larvae, which occur in, in July from moths that started to fly in late June, use the biofix of the second generation plus the new Apple insect model to time sprays for the larval generation. Suggested action and timing and threshold is 175 to 200 degree days, base 45, from the second generation biofix, plus an average trap catch of more than 10 moths per week. You could need two applications of an effective larvicidal product. Management of this pest is generally integrated with that for codling moth, which uses a similar procedure. The Plum Curculio management program begins at petal fall, so it's important to have a good idea of the petal fall date on your farm. Macintosh is a good representative variety, and it's also the basis for the overposition model. So make a note of this date for any Macs grown in your area. The tree fruit guidelines can obviously help you select an effective product to use at petal fall, and then you can use the petal fall date plus the new apple insect model to determine the end of plump curculio migration into the orchard, which corresponds to the end of the fruit protection period. The model estimates this to occur at 308 degree days, base 50 from petal fall in Macintosh. Oblique banded leaf roller can actually end up needing attention somewhat earlier than plump curculio, depending on whether there are serious infestations of late in star larval feeding which can take place at late bloom to petal fall. The OBLR sampling form in the guidelines explains how to examine bud clusters for infestations of OBLR larvae with a suggested threshold of 3% of clusters infested. Check the tree fruit guidelines for appropriate products at bloom, which mostly comprise BT products or petal fall. Around the beginning of June, Pheromone traps should be deployed to monitor for first adult flight. Use the biofix plus the new apple insect model to time sprays for first larval generation. The suggested action threshold in high risk blocks, meaning those that tend to need treatment every year without having to sample, is 360 degree days base 43 from biofix. Or in low risk blocks, meaning those where the problem infestations don't always occur, but can, wait until 600 degree days from the biofix and use the sampling form to examine expanding terminals for larval infestations, also at a 3% threshold. In either case, treatments are available and are mainly used in July and two applications may be required. Coddling moth adults begin flying at bloom, at which time you should be monitoring pheromone traps for the first adult flight, which obviously you should note. Treatment options during this period, again, focus on mating disruption using twin tube ties, meso dispensers, or puffers. Additionally, in high risk blocks, consider a coddling moth OFM virus product as a complement. In June, Use the previously noted biofix plus the new apple insect model to time sprays for the first larval generation. Suggested action timing and threshold is 250 to 360 degree days, base 50, from biofix if you're catching an average of five moths per trap per week or more. Two applications of an appropriate product are generally necessary. In the summer, that would be mid to late July, repeat this process using the biofix and NUA model to time sprays for uh, the second larval generation. The suggested action threshold here is either 1260 to 1370 degree days from the first biofix or 300, oh, 250 to 360 degree days from the second biofix, which is the first catch of the second generation. Since this is not, as, not always a distinctive event, uh, using the first generation biofix might prove to be more practical. Again, you may need applications uh, twice for this generation, and this management program is usually integrated with oriental fruit moth. So this requires keeping track of the two species individually.
Now, apple maggot is relatively straightforward compared with the moth pests. At the beginning of July, place two to three volatile baited apple maggot sphere traps along an edge of apple orchard that's adjacent to hedgerows or a source of immigrating adults. If there's no hedgerow present, use a south facing edge. Check the traps at least twice per week to be sure of detecting their first occurrence. Suggested action threshold is an average capture of five adults per trap. Treatment options obviously can be selected from the guidelines to protect the fruit during the old position period. But this procedure should be repeated if the threshold is reached again after the period of the first spray residual efficacy has lapsed, which usually is no more than 10 to 14 days. Then use the first trap capture date plus the new Apple Insight model to determine the estimated end of the overposition period. So putting this all together is largely an exercise in optimizing your time management. It's advisable to have some kind of a flow chart prepared ahead of time for the different tasks throughout the season so that you know when to deploy traps for different pests, the optimal times for taking samples, when treatment decisions need to be made, when mating disruption needs to be in place, and when you should be on the lookout for the secondary pest species. And there are quite a few, including San Jose scale, for which we have a uh, apple pest model in, in NUA. Also, plenty of aphids, green aphids and woolly apple aphids, plus leafhoppers, Japanese beetle, brown marmorated stink bug, et cetera. And all of these are obviously able to be found in the guidelines under additional summer sprays. Overall, it's necessary to be familiar with the relative timing of each pest activity. And importantly, how does your insect control program correspond with your disease control sprays? It's important to know this to maximize your efficiency. Here's a suggested timetable for hanging pheromone traps and taking samples. For the moth traps, it's important not to be late enough that you have to guess at the first flight biofix date. OFM comes first, followed shortly by coddling moth. And be sure to remember to change the lures on these traps after the first flights have finished. OBLR comes in another month or so and generally doesn't need a lure change. European red mites should ideally be checked at least once per month using the sampling forms in the guidelines. Now, if you trap for San Jose scale, which is a little more difficult because of their small size, you will get a more precise estimate of their developmental progress, which you can use in the NUA model for management of the crawlers. And apple maggot traps should be out before the end of June, just in case they have an early season. Also, even if they continue to fly into September, don't generally need to keep monitoring for them since the females flying at this time are usually finished with their egg laying by then.